everyone. We're excited to hear from the kingdom. Uh, so without further ado, we will rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. And with it being Memorial Day weekend uh, coming up, we'll, we'll have a moment of silence to, uh, to honor those who gave their lives fighting for our rights and so that we can be here. And if we could, our newest board member, Cameron Trent, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. A brief moment of silence to honor those who have put for us. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a seat. All right. Good evening. Just want to remind everybody of the emergency exits. Take time to look where they are, to my right, your left, and also to the rear of the building. In the event of an emergency, please make sure you exit calmly right straight out to the parking lot. Uh, okay. Also remind you that this is a smoke-free, nobody smokes here, right? Okay. This is a smoke-free campus, so there's no smoking anywhere on uh, South Country School District grounds. All right. So, um, so that the board could have executive session uh, in a legal fashion, we did swear in uh, Mr. Trent before the meeting, but for the purposes of all of you, it's a very momentous occasion uh, to celebrate his election to fill the expired term of a, a trustee who had to leave. We'd like to do a ceremonial swearing in for your benefit. So, Mr. Trent, would you mind stepping up and uh, the clerk will swear you in. I, Cameron Trent, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of Board of Education Trustee according to the best of my ability. Thank you. Now I see we go right into the consent agenda because we're a little late. Do we want to take the children out of order? Uh, yeah. We, we, we can. Sure, we can do that. Why don't we do that? Okay. Um, so, okay. So I'm going to jump to communication. Please. Sure. Absolutely. So we're in for a special treat tonight. Uh, we're going to begin communications and announcements with uh, a presentation from the kingdom, and I'm going to introduce Mr. Clark to get us started. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Gianni, trustees of the South Country School District, for having us here tonight. Before I get started, I just want to say on behalf of the entire Premier Kingdom, um, a thank you to uh, the three trustees whose terms will be concluding in June. And from the bottom of our hearts, we want to thank Ms. Felice, Ms. Herman, and Dr. Griffin for all you've done for the kids. It's a labor of love. You've put in many hours, and we can't thank you enough. Thank you for your service. We also want to take the moment to thank our newly elected trustees who just elected last night. And congratulations, I believe, I, and they're all here. To Mrs. Buddha, over here. Mr. Chase, Mr. Parker, and Katie Kingdom alumni, Cameron and Mr. Pence. <laughs> thank you for being willing to serve our kids in this important capacity. We much appreciate it. Um, just a quick introduction to what is STEAM. It's an acronym, it stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Music. And uh, at the end of last year, the administration and the board supported Kramer piloting a STEAM lab, uh, the first one in the district. And what we want to do is show you what that has meant, what it has done, and who better to explain that to you than the ones who use the STEAM lab our students. And so and I just want to say, uh, as with everything in the kingdom, um, this was a collaborative effort, and there's no way this lab will be up and running. These kids going full steam if it wasn't for our incredible Kramer Kingdom Steam Commission. 
It was too important just to be a committee. We needed a commission to get it done. So I just wanted to introduce those members. And some are here tonight. Uh, Mrs. Whitman, please say hello. Thank you. Ms. Figueroa, who's on maternity leave. Ms. Albrecht, who's going to be here tonight. Mrs. McCarthy. Ms. Archibald. Ms. Belford, who's kind of relevant to the here. Ms. Daniels and Ms. Williams, who are fortunate to be with us tonight. Thank you for sitting out here. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to ask our very innovative and animated library media specialist, Ms. Belford, to kind of uh, assist the kids. Ms. Belford gave a lot of her own time over the last couple of weeks working with the kids with the presentation. Ms. Belford, thank you for that. And I'm going to give it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Okay, thank you so much to everybody who had something to do with this. Without you, we could not have done this. So we brought, brought some of our special friends to tell you, in their own words, why they like the STEAM Lab. So we're going to start with our kindergarten friends. This is Nazaya. Nazaya, can you tell everybody why you like the STEAM Lab? Big voice, Peter. I like the blue one. Thank you, Luca. That was awesome. <laughs> and now we have our first grade friends. This is Shazneen. I like the steam lab because we can do things by ourselves and discover on our own. The teacher doesn't tell us how doesn't tell us how to do different activities. We can also ask our friends for help. My favorite team activity is the remote control gear robot. We guide them around the steam lab to see which one is stronger. Thank you. <laughs> and now we have our friend Brennan, who's also a first grader. My favorite part of the team lab is the stars. We use teamwork. Everybody creates a part or something, then we put it all together and make one big thing. I like teamwork because we teach each other. Each person knows something, and when we put it all together, it's bigger and better. And now we're on our second grade friend, Tristan. You ready? Sure, you want to kneel down with me? <laughs> Do you want to read it or do you want me to help? Okay. Tristan, why do you like the steam lab so much? Thank you so much to the Board of Education for the very enjoyable 
playlist. Here are some reasons I enjoy music. I like testing the pH in our aquaponics space with the stuff that I like and the pH We can animate things like the sheep that they are just. We can work together to make the like this whole thing with the marble. One of my favorite things is that the steam law teaches kids how to work My favorite is the thing is with the special circuit. They're like clay and you can make an arrow and then you just make it like this. Good job, I know. connectors and straws, and I like those task cards. I also like the fish tanks because I like the glowing disco wall in them. I love the driver's tables because you can write on the table and not worry about it staining. I like that our teacher brings us to the steam lab when we get our break from math problems. Instead, we work together to build things and learn math in a new way. My friends help me learn new things. It's a great place for teamwork. Yeah, I just would like to um, invite two of uh, our teachers on our STEAM commission up on this Whitman and Sandy. I'd like to come up for a moment. We just want to say thank you to all the children that came out tonight to so speak at the Board of Ed. You guys did a great job. Can we give them a little bit? In addition to thanking the Board of Education and our administrators, we'd also like to thank the South Country Ed Foundation. They helped, um, they funded the lab with over $4,000 worth of grants this year, so um, we're really appreciative of that and our ever-growing STEAM lab. Thank you. I'm actually going to get a little uh, picture, I believe, right now. Yes. And I'm asking Ms. Benji actually to kind of stay up here. Yeah. Okay, and you guys get together for the picture. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.
section of the um, Science Teachers Association of the State of New York informing me that our own Mrs. Benzie has been named as the recipient of the 2019 Elementary Science Teacher of the Year. Wow. In the words of the um, Selection Committee. Just want to read what they had to say about Mrs. Benzie. It says, Mrs. Benzie joins an elite group of science educators who have demonstrated that they are not only outstanding classroom teachers, but they have been involved in endeavors that have provided students and teachers with programs and strategies for the advancement of science in and out of the classroom. Gina has promoted the enhancement of science education with distinction and has earned the respect of her colleagues, and I cannot emphasize enough how critical Ms. Benzie has been in the development of the STEAM lab. She has been a machine, and everyone always looks to Ms. Benzie for ideas. Ms. Benzie, we are honored to have you on our staff from here. The whole kingdom is very proud of you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you again to Board of Education for giving our students the opportunity to share their work. We appreciate it. Thank you. 
Are there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing no discussion, you're ready to vote. All those in favor, please raise your hands. Thank you, put them down. Any opposed, any abstentions? We have two abstentions, Mr. Trent and Dr. Crick. And uh, with the majority voting in favor, the motions, uh, the, mo the uh, minutes for April 25th are approved. We have, now we have the minutes for May 8th. Uh, we, um, we need a motion and a second for the minutes, for the minutes of April 25th, uh, Mr. Nick, second by Ms. Mills. What's that? May. We are May 8th the 16th. No, wait a minute, hold on, I went back to the uh, hold on. I went to May 8th. It didn't come up. Okay. 
was, Take that back. I was here. That That's was right. Here. <laughs> Mr. Mill, uh, Mr. Caccini, and Ms. Hampton. Which we won't have a we won't have a positive vote if it's caps. So I'll vote favor. It's not really an issue. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, we need a motion and a second. Motion by Captain Griffin, second by Mr. Nix. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your hands. Thank you very much. Put your hands down. Any uh, um, against? Any abstentions? We have one abstention by Mr. Trent. And those minutes are approved by the majority. And let's go back to thirteen. Okay. This one, uh, Ms. Malin and Mr. Nix. Uh, motion, we need a motion to second for May 13th. Dr. Griffin, seconded by you. I wasn't work, here, but I you, but you can so, second. You can so second. Okay. All right. Seconded by Ms. Mallon. Um, oh, any discussion? You're going to need somebody who wasn't here yeah, to vote sure. for it to pass, or you're going to have to push it to next. It's only three people who were here. It was the special meeting. It was the special meeting, so. You can vote in favor. I, there's no reason you can. Right. It's just customary. There's no legal reason, right? That's true. There's no reason. Yeah. Okay, not you agree to vote. with its contents? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're good, Councilor? Yes. Okay. All, right. uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you for coming down. Uh, any uh, against? Any abstentions? And one abstention for Mr. Trent. Uh, seeing uh, the minutes of May 13th were approved by majority. Okay. That brings us to the balance of the consent agenda, which would be item C4 through 6. Uh, on the consent agenda. Can I have a motion and a second, please, to approve? Motion by Ms. Nick, second by Ms. Malin. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please raise your hands. Thank you, put them down. Any opposed, any abstentions? And we have one abstention with Mr. Trump. Consent agenda item C3, uh, C4 through 6 uh, is approved by majority. Uh, now we are up to communications, and we're back to the superintendent. Yes, we are. Thank you so much, President Police. And I will continue with our district-wide art show. Congratulations are in order to our art department faculty and all students who had work on display at yesterday's district-wide fine and performing art show. Hopefully everyone had the opportunity to visit it in the gymnasium right alongside the boat. And as usual at the show, our students, under the exceptional tutelage of, and guidance of our faculty, displayed excellent work. So congratulations to everyone who had work mm -hmm. displayed. And then next, um, the budget vote and election results. Um, just to speak uh, quickly on that, uh, since we are not divided into election districts, we need not certify the results of the election. We only need to declare the results of the election, which were done last night. I did, however, want to announce last night's results and publicly thank the community for their support on the budget, the capital reserve authorization, as well as the authorization of the liquidation of the property loss reserve. For the budget, Proposition 1, uh, it passed 1,282 votes to 540, or a 70.36% pass rate. Proposition 2, the Capital Reserve, it passed 1,278 votes to 508, or a 71.56% pass rate. And for Proposition 3, the Property Loss Reserve liquidation, it passed 1,055 votes to 716, or a 59.57% pass rate. Earning th three-year terms beginning July 1, congratulations are ordered to Ann Hayes. Melissa Aruda and Clyde Parker, all of whom are with us this evening. So congratulations to you all. <laughs> and earning a two-year term in 39 days is Mr. Cameron Trent. Uh, so welcome, Mr. Trent, as you also are with us. <laughs> and that is all that I have. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Trustee and Advisory Committee report. Why don't we start with Ms. Uh, Carly Phillips. I just wanted to take a moment to congratulate the board members. I'm very excited for everyone. Um, <clears throat> the results of the class student council elections are in at the high school, and we're looking forward to work with both the new class boards and the new student council board 
to introduce great ideas for the next year's school year, so we'll be meeting shortly to discuss new ideas for the future. I wanted to note that the date of the senior barbecue was changed to June 6th at 2 p.m. because students at our school won the Mets baseball bullying contest and they will be honored in the field during the game. So on the original date of the senior barbecue is the Mets field trip. So we just had to make a change for that. And the senior trip is ready to go and all of our 12th graders that are attending are super excited. And I hope everyone enjoys their Memorial Day weekend. That's all I have for today. Yeah. Ms. Manley. Really quick, thank you. Um, I mean, they're all home in bed by now. <laughs> but um, Kramer Street was just outstanding to have the kids come back. And we, we always talk about the things that are going on in the schools and who better to tell us than our little friends from Kramer Street. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows Kramer is kind of where my heart's always been. So to see what they're doing in the STEAM lab and to have Ms. Benzie be the recipient of such a prestigious award is quite wonderful and it just shows the direction that we're headed and all the good things that are going on. So thank you to everyone for that. My turn? Great. Um, well, I got to start with the yesterday's vote. Thank you to the community for overwhelmingly uh, supporting our budget and the other two propositions. Congratulations to the four new board members. Um, welcome, um, and congratulations, obviously, our students. The, was it the jazz band that was performing? Or the, the jazz band, the art show is awesome, and it's, it's, it's become such a tradition that I vote in the morning. My wife usually votes on the way home from work, but we have to get the kids and go back so that we can get the picture of them next to their artwork. And it's just, it's great that, that, that you know, they know, and, and what was really nice was that their art teacher was there you know, pointing out to parents where kids' stuff was, because it's a little daunting looking at, you know, looking for a third graders piece of artwork on that wall, and, you know, they want to go through everyone. So it was really, really nice, and it's always, you know, to me the best part of the, uh, of the evening. Um, some congratulations, I think, are in order, although not done yet, for the varsity softball team. Two big playoff wins, including knocking off the first. Do we have results of tonight's game? It's got to be over now. They played long with tonight. I can try, I'll text somebody too, see if we can find out, but they have their third playoff game against Longwood today at Longwood as a 16th seed to, have, to knock off the one seed, uh, the playing game in a one seed. It's a remarkable feat for a, uh, for a high school varsity uh, team. So congratulations to them thus far, and hopefully they'll go on. A um, little thank you to Mr. Uh, Dr. Gerges. Um, I had called Central this week. I guess we had a... Uh, so uh, tough field conditions of the middle school softball field. Um, I ran into some parents, they made a comment, and uh, going to vote, the same parents called me and said, I see Cruz out on the field right now, so if that was you, thanks. I don't know if that was planned or if it was my call, but I'll take credit where I can. Um, so there's also, I believe, some um, congratulations to our league championship track team. I know I don't have the results of the meet yesterday. Do yeah, we know? I don't. Okay, so we, yesterday was the league meet to see if they go on to counties. So a uh, successful spring season. Uh, of course, congratulations to all those students. For as long as I've been a board member, I think we, we certainly celebrate our students' success um, more often than ever. Uh, but I gotta tell you, I feel like we don't see those little guys enough. So it's always a treat when the elementary school is here. We see high school kids a lot. But man, seeing the kindergartens, and for them to grab the microphone and speak, I have two third graders, so I know it's, uh, it's a little daunting for them, and one of the, I think the third girl, boy, was she articulate for a first grader, wasn't she? Um, and a little pride for myself today, I received news that I was nominated for a position on the executive board at the Nassau Suffolk School Board Association, so um, I was pretty honored by that, uh, by that nomination, so um, I look forward to hopefully being a part of that board and being able to bring back the work that they do and discuss it here. The Nassau Suffolk School uh, Executive Board is made up of nine board trustees from Suffolk and nine from Nassau, and they have a legislative committee, a financial committee, and they, you know, just guide and help, uh, it's similar to uh, uh, New York State School Board Association. So I was honored to, see, to receive that nomination, and uh, hopefully I get uh, placed on the board, and I'll let you know if that happens, but uh, I was pretty honored by that today, and surprised, I had no idea it was coming. Um, and that's all I got. Thank you. Mr. Trent, would you like to uh, offer a report? Uh, well, I, I would just want to thank everyone for voting. Um, you know, it's been a humbling experience thus far, uh, and I'm excited to get to work. Okay, thank you. Dr. Griffin. Yes, a big thank you to the community for coming out and voting yes for our budget. 
and, and congratulations to our four new candidates. Um, just met two of you, but I've known two of you for, for a little bit of time now. So um, I'm, I'm very happy that as we are exiting, there there are wonderful faces to take over. It's it's, it's definitely takes off some of the uh, some of the sting when you're leaving this this position. Um, and also, uh, I had the opportunity. One of the things the district does very well um, is transition the students from one school to the next whether it be from one of the elementary schools to Frank P, Frank P to the middle school. I think it does a lot to calm the students. Um, and what my third grader is going into Frank P next year, and, uh, and he came back absolutely thrilled. Um, he got a special hug from Mr. Totoro, who, who recognized him because he looks exactly like my older son, and so it made him feel a part of it. Um, and of course, Mr. Rosinski and Ms. Ulberg do a great job of making the new students feel comfortable. And it's, it's such a great place. But the icing on the cake for him was the uh, courtyard. He was like, holy cow, I wish we could play soccer on that thing. Cause he, <laughs> so uh, uh, thank you to the entire Frank P. staff for making it a really wonderful experience for the kids coming over from the different elementary schools. And uh, my son's really excited to go there. Uh, he can't wait for the after-school activities and, and to feel part of that Frank P. family. So uh, I thought that was something that we, we don't really talk about enough, the, the planning that goes into that and the impact it has on the kids to make them feel a little more comfortable in that transition. Um, and uh, my son can't wait. So thank you, everyone at Frank P. Can I add on to that statement, if you don't mind? Sure. I, I totally forgot about it, so thank you, because I have twins that are headed to Frank yeah. P. Well next year. They could not have come home more excited. And it was, you know, they're already talking about the clubs. They're already picking out, you know, oh, I hope I get this teacher, and I hope I get, and I saw Ms. Nobby in the hallway, and I, you know, it was all going on and on and on. So, and my son um, is struggling with anxiety, and something like that is usually very difficult for him. You wouldn't know it when you saw this kid come home. So kudos to everybody. And it reminded me of when my oldest went there the first time and my introduction to Frank P. Wong. And what a wonderful building that really is and what it offers. And I haven't even been to see the courtyard yet. So, you know, I, it's uh, so thank you for bringing that up. I almost forgot. And the doors and the windows. Yeah, they're not going to comment on that, but I'll, I'll check that out next time I'm there. You have no, to no, I, you have, I have to get not. there. It's, it's remarkable. It's really remarkable. Okay. Uh, I just want to uh, echo the sentiments of my fellow trustees the, about the um, performance from our children from the Kramer Kingdom. That was a beautiful thing. It's always nice to see the young ones perform. Uh, that, that was lovely. Um, uh, congratulations to all the new trustees, Clyde, Melissa, Anne, and Cameron. And I would like to point out that I am no longer the youngest board member. <laughs> 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 uh, um, but in all seriousness, congratulations. And I really look forward to working with all of you. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. So, uh, just to just to speak to the uh, the budget proposals and the uh, and the overwhelming majority that it, it passed by, that um, the, the, it was a concerted effort by the board and certainly by administration with the road shows that took place. Uh, we visited every PTA and spent time with our leadership committee that uh, Dr. Gianni has formed and meets with one once a month to explain the budget, to explain what was in each of the proposals. And, um, and I think that's why we got the uh, overwhelming majority that we did. So um, continued, that, that is a, a benefit to our, our community to reach directly out to our, uh, starting with the PTAs, to be able to ask questions in a very informal setting about the budget and then, and then get them to be the missionaries of advocating for the budget. That's something that we, uh, we, we pitched last year when we were advocating for the courtyard and the work at Frank P. Long, and we did the same for the kingdom. Uh, this year, our capital projects will benefit the Kramer School. Um, and also safety, you know, the, uh, the security vestibules that uh, we were waiting for approval from New York State, which uh, we now have, and now the capital money can go into uh, making those lobbies secure. So, um, so good job, again, uh, and, a, and a good team effort. Uh, there were many concerts. This is concert season, so I uh, was able to enjoy uh, Brookhaven Elementary and Frank P. Long's concert, concert this year. And also I attended at the Belport Elementary the dual language um, introductory to allow 
families to come in and decide if they want to have their children partake in the, in the dual language program. They had a, a video that this board has seen before that, they, uh, that was shown to those families and, um, and we're looking for an expanded program there. So that was also a very, a very nice night. And also I just want to give uh, props to the administration here. I have a friend who uh, babysits for her grandchildren that live here on Dunton Avenue. She walks that grandchild in a stroller and our parking lot as we enter on, as we exit onto Dutton Avenue has a severe repair that is in need. And she can't walk along the, um, the sidewalk, has to walk out into the street after a rain and it puddles. And so she decided just to walk into administration to uh, voice her concern and see if there was some, um, some uh, way and it could be addressed. And she said she was met with overwhelming kindness um, when she came in to make that request. And then the second call I got was from a constituent who had questions about the budget and called here and decided, uh, Dr. Gianni's looking at me because I didn't brief him on this before, right, before the meeting. So he's waiting for the other shoe to drop, but it's all good. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Dr. Gurgis uh, got on the phone with this constituent and explained the, um, the uh, details of the budget that she was looking to have clarified and uh, could not compliment you enough for taking the time to to speak with her and help her understand the budget, which of course she voted favorably and was at a breakfast at Peter's on the Green with a uh, probably about 20 other people and shared this story in front of those people. So it was a it was a nice feather in the cap for the district, and I I just want to say how proud I am of the district for having that open door policy with members when they when they do call. So thank you, and thank you, Mr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Gianni. Um, and I think that concludes our reports. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now we're on to guide to board meetings. Do we have any cards? Any, anyone in the audience wish to speak? You just have to fill out a card. We don't have to move the podium back over. If there's no one speaking, we'll move it back over at the end if we need it. We'll speak about the guide to the board meetings at the end if we have more um, uh, requests to speak. All right, now we're up for items for discussion. And yes, thank you. Our first item this evening is a presentation from the Center for Environmental Education and Discovery. Seed. I'd like to introduce Ms. Rebecca Mullers, who's going to make that presentation. Hello. Hello. Actually, would you would you like the podium back over? Um, that's okay. okay. I can I can do it out. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you though, for the idea of applause. <laughs> 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 uh, my name is Rebecca Mullers, and I'm executive director for Seed, which is the Center for Environmental Education and Discovery. Um, I have a short a video to show you, and then I'm going to speak a few minutes after that. Um, but we're at, uh, an emerging new nature center um, that is uh, in Brookhaven Hamlet over on South Country Road, 287 South Country Road. It's the old, a lot of people know it as the Washington Lodge or the old Maris Brothers Estate, um, right next to Isabella Rosalini. It's kind of between Isabella Rosalini's farm and uh, Deer Run Farm. We actually share a fence line with Isabella's farm. Uh, so hopefully you all at least vaguely know about our property. So without further ado, we'll watch the video and then I'll speak for a couple minutes. <coughs> We live in a time where playing outside or riding a bike is overshadowed by the internet, online gaming, and social media. Now, more than ever, our society needs to connect with nature. The average American spends 93% of their life indoors, and in a typical week, only 6% of kids aged 9 to 13 play outside in the natural world, exploring in a timeless way. Nature inspires. Nature empowers. Nature brings us together to learn and grow as a species. Now imagine a group of inspired and driven people with the fundamental need to connect with nature. Now imagine giving that group the opportunity of a lifetime to create a nature center designed for the modern age. This will be the epicenter of community, culture, and nature connection for people of all ages on Long Island. Originally founded as the Art and Nature Group, we are now seed. The Center for Environmental Education and Discovery. And we planted our roots at the Washington Lodge Estate in Brookhaven, New York. At SEED, we are creating a new vision of community, and we invite you to join us. Our vision is a life where people are stewards of this beautiful world that surrounds us, where people of all ages come together for an education and culture 
that is grounded and inspired by trees, and gulls, mushrooms, and osprey, and all the glory that embodies the natural world of Long Island. I want to be a conservation biologist, so I feel like being involved in sea, I will be able to um, understand other ecosystems and how they work. Like I grew up in the city, so it's like I, I'm not that exposed. I feel like I want to expand more my, my knowledge around the environment. We need people who are working towards saving our world and educating everyone about why that's important. We will offer school and scout programs, family and adult workshops, summer camp and after school programs, as well as conservation and restoration projects. And whenever possible, we will showcase and teach about green technology right in our own building. But what really sets us apart is the Nature Retreat Center, where we will be teaching new skills such as cooking with native and organic plants, beekeeping, wilderness survival, and so much more. Plus, we are developing an environmental think tank comprised of nature organizations that will help raise the bar for conservation and education on Long Island. Our programs will present many opportunities for engaging our youth in positive and meaningful activities that build self-confidence and advance our community at large. And I'm really excited about the way we're doing it at SEED. It's a little different than a typical major center, and I'm, I'm thrilled with all the different aspects of it. We are renovating the historic Washington Lodge to create a fitting home for this dream of a new community. There is so much work that needs to be done to reach our goal, and we need your help. We need your financial support. We need your time as a volunteer. We need supplies and builders. Please help us so we can finally open the doors and begin sharing the benefits of healthy living for future generations. Thank you for your support, and I hope to see you here soon at the Seed Center. Washington Lodge has stayed for about two years now. The organization's been around for about four. Um, and uh, some of you may have, um, maybe have visited one of our uh, festivals that we have. We have quarterly festivals um, the, around solstice and equinox um, uh, events, you know, the changing of the seasons. Um, in fact, the next one is coming up June 22nd, um, and it's a Native American culture theme. So we have the Shinnecock tribe doing um, quite, a, quite a number of um, demonstrations or be uh, cooking over an open fire and giving samples of the foods and uh, dance and traditional dress and uh, we Native American vendors and things like that. Um, so there's, uh, uh, that's been, up until the last year, our focus was primarily these events uh, because we're growing, um, growing our organization. But now we're expanding into other programs um, and uh, we're now having, a, we have a forest preschool program going on at the property. Um, we're doing uh, forest therapy walks. Um, we have a teacher training, a forest, uh, forest school teacher training happening this summer, and our very first um, summer program for kids um, entering grades two through six, which is going to focus on wildlife and uh, local ecology. Um, so we're really, really excited that we're expanding now beyond just, you know, the organization's growing, um, we're expanding beyond the events into programming, um, which brings us to school programming as well. And that's something, as I mentioned, into the um, in the video that um, that's an area that we think we can be a good resource and we want to start a dialogue with the school district about um, what it is that we have to offer and what we bring to the table and ask questions about what it is that you're looking for and you might be looking for and how we can enhance and expand on what you're already doing. Um, and, uh, you know, I think there's, you know, there's quite a number of studies that um, demonstrate um, the benefits of uh, nature um, immersion and being in the outdoors and nature education, everything from uh, reducing anxiety and depression, and uh, there's lots of studies about um, uh, attention issues and things like that, as well as um, uh, problem solving and um, uh, healthy bodies, and we find that active kids uh, make active adults. Um, and just in general, um, there's studies that indicate that children um, have better school performance because they're sort of get more out of the box thinking when they're out in nature and exploring and learning through that exploration. So um, we believe there's a lot of values that um, that our programming and what it is that we have to offer can do to enhance um, and improve what you're doing. So um, uh, we have um, on our uh, part of our uh, group we have um, Eric Powers who is in the video. Uh, he's our program director, 
and he's been has about a 30 year um, uh, history and experience in nature education. He's a wildlife biologist, and he's been working in the schools on Long Island for many years, um, delivering all sorts of environmental education programs, both in schools as well as out of school field trips, um, out in parks and and, um, and various places. So. Um, I look forward to um, hopefully meeting with uh, Mr. Small and discussing various opportunities that we might be able to offer the school district um, uh, based on you know any any needs or interests that you have. I mean it's really wonderful to have a nature center right in your backyard here. Um, just yesterday we actually had the um, high school environmental club, the SEQ club, um, walked over and did a field trip uh, at our site and we did a hike. And I worked on a little bit of a conservation project um, involving uh, restoring um, American chestnut trees. Uh, so that was uh, that was exciting. Finally, you know, having a first group from your district uh, over at our property. Um, but the the types of programs we can do really um, are very much based on um, what your needs are. But some of the types of things that um, that uh, Eric has done before in the, in, uh, in schools involve citizen science or weather studies, conservation projects, all sorts of hands-on science programs. Whether it's the animal life cycle, uh, wildlife on Long Island, forest ecology, Long Island geology groundwater, um, you name it, there's, uh, when it comes to nature, science, and the environment, um, you know, there's, there's all sorts of things we can do depending on what your schools, your teachers, and your students need. Um, one type, one similar, um, one program that Eric did recently, um, I'm not forget what district it was with, um, but the, the teacher was looking for um, a program that focused, and this, was, this one happened to be an out of school uh, field trip, um, he does quite a lot of uh, programs in schools as well, because I, I know with budgets and things, it's getting harder and harder to do uh, the out-of-school field trips. Um, but the, this teacher was interested in um, a program on trees, and having to do with her curriculum, but she also wanted to weave in math and kind of do a double hit on that. So um, and while they were learning about trees and they were in the forest and, um, and exploring that, um, they wove in the math by doing, uh, taking measurements of uh, tree height and density in a certain area of the forest. And they made calculations as to an estimation as to how many trees were in this patch of forest based on the height and the density. And, and so they, they wove it all together, and it was really a, a, a great experience for the kids. Um, learning, uh, hands-on, involvement, and uh, working together, and all those, all those good things. So um, I look forward to, to meeting with you, Mr. Small. And um, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to, to answer them. But um, like I said, we're, uh, we're sort of new on the scene, and we're looking to be a resource and um, hopefully work together and find opportunities that, you know, where we can, um, you know, be together and, uh, and encourage, I, I think, um, we're really about encouraging community and a very collaborative space, and, uh, you know, I, we're, we're just around the corner from the high school, and, you know, we really hope that uh, once the, the building portion, um, you know, the inside portion of our building is ready, uh, that kids might walk over and get involved with conservation projects after school, and um, and really uh, we even talk about things like um, doing a um, uh, you know like a, a podcast that the kids could do on environmental education and conservation, and um, I think there's just so many opportunities from elementary all the way up to the high school to get involved with what we're doing and to encourage um, you know stewardship of our earth and uh, and science and learning um, based on you know, the great outdoors. So, does anyone have any questions? Well, I just want to make a statement that I, I thank you for being here and I thank sure. you for reaching out to the district to want to present so that we have an awareness of, of just what you offer and how you're expanding. I have attended a number of the SEED events and I just have to say that they are so welcoming and so inviting that if you haven't had a chance to see what they're all about, um, uh, go on uh, the 22nd of June? 22nd of June, yeah. That's our summer solstice festival. And it's, it's just really wonderful. So um, so I look forward to your programs working in, in, in concert with our district to offer more opportunities to our Thank students. Thank you. I appreciate I really appreciate uh, your invitation uh, for, for to come to the meeting. So I, um, there's really, there's so much potential and so much possibility there. Um, and it's just obviously a natural that we would work together and, and be involved. And uh, so I, I really hope that there's a good future for us all together. I just wanted to say that yesterday I actually attended the field trip. Oh, good! Um, yeah, okay. my AP biology class one. And it was really a great experience. Yeah. Got a tour of the lodge and everything. I thought 
feel like there's a lot that you guys can do with that. It's space. exciting, right? Yeah. yeah. The building, thank you. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, um, no, I really did. The building itself is like 7,300 square feet. It's a very large, a large space actually. And then the property, just FYI, is a total of close to 70 acres that goes all the way down to the water. So it's a combination of town of Brookhaven and Suffolk County owned property, and we're pulling it all together as one property, and we're in these, you know, we're sort of the trailhead uh, for the entire nature center. So it's um, it's really exciting. There's quite a lot of possibilities for the property. In the so it's across the street as well. It is. It goes both ways. So if you if you're familiar with the property, the, the property that the building is on is about nine to ten acres, um, right next to Isabella's farm. But as you as you go across the street, there's um, there's well there's 51 acres that's owned by the county, and that's considered the Dennis Pilsen Nature Preserve, which has no. I mean, there's sort of a small sign that says it's county owned, but there's no parking, there's no facilities, there's no way to even know that that's accessible, and people in the neighborhood I think walk their dogs through there. Um, but we're now pulling that all together. And we're forging trails through there, and um, and we'll be maintaining them. And Post Morrow also has another 10 to 15 acres that's down that you can only really access through that preserve or through Deer Run Farms. So they're giving us permission for programming as well. So when you total it all together, um, it's like 70 to 75 acres uh, of usable space. And our property will be the place where you can park, and there'll be a trailhead with maps and and information and all of that. And so we're really trying to, to make this property that really was sort of set vacant and hasn't been utilized into a really viable resource for the community. So I, you know, it's really, it's exciting and I encourage anyone who's interested in getting involved and volunteering and um, we're an all volunteer group and um, we really welcome everyone to come and, and be a part of, of creating this center. Just a quick question. I, I think I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's just some advertisements where you're selling some like organic um, uh, yard materials, is, compost. Yes. And did I see fertilizer also? Or was it just compost? Um, well, so that was right. So we just had um, uh, we just had our, our, um, our Long Island, uh, what do we call it? I guess we were calling it a, um, what do we call it? We called it the project, I forget even what the name of it was, but we were selling compost and some organic fertilizer. Um, and also grass seeds, some really high quality grass seed. And we were working with friends of Belfort Bay um, uh, who are very much, you know, about saving the bay and the concern about all the nitrogen uh, mm -hmm. issues going into this. So these products were much more nitrogen friendly um, and also really do, do an amazing job um, on their lawns. So, uh, yeah, we just did that in March and we're having another one of those sales in September. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. How often are you going to do it? Because like, yeah. I missed it in March oh, and yeah. I live near the water and it's one of those things where, you know, it's. You know, I probably didn't pay as close attention in my in my younger years as I should have. But when you really, especially when you had the event of after Superstorm Sandy and you opened up, you know, the old inlet and you just, I really started paying attention to what's happening to the bay and yeah. how beneficial that was. But I have friends who make their living clamming on the bay and they can talk all day long about the harm of the pesticides in the water and things like that. So I want to do my part, but I just, and I intended to try to get down there yeah. and just do a little bit better job of organic, right. uh, you know, uh, yard materials right. as well. We so, might be placing another order, so just give us a call. And, yeah, uh, I always try to pay attention to it. I just, I'm not around a lot, so I'm like, I and you miss that one day, and I'm I like, know. oh, you know. I know. But, and see, just the, the, the Friends of the Great South Bay, do they, are they still doing the it? Friends of Belport Bay? Uh, Belport Bay? Yeah, no, they're not, they're not doing it. They were, we were doing the sale in partnership with them, and they were sort of really doing a lot of education, and we were actually right. the ones coordinating the sale. And, and I'm sure I can find it, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I just wanted to support a local effort. Yeah. And then, you know, you're walking home to Port Lowe's, and it's just like, Pallets and pallets of the stuff you probably don't want, no. and I'm These not really educated on. It. Yeah, and I'm not really educated on what you should and shouldn't. But I knew that with what your efforts are, it's, it's got to be the right stuff. Right. So I would put all my trust in you that right. this is what I need yeah. to do. So, yeah, but I missed you. it. So yeah, anyway. so September. But give us a call because there are other people that are trickling in, and we may, if we have enough interest, we may place another order. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, did you have a comment? Yeah. Did you want to introduce Tom? Oh, yes, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I'm actually the chair of the, of the board of CEDS. Would you just step up to, with oh, sure. Rebecca because we're live streaming? Oh, yeah. okay. I apologize. I didn't need to leave Tom out. Yeah. Tom, yeah, I'm Tom Pelletier. I'm the, the chair of the board, um, and I'm excited to be a part of it and you know, help to help this organization grow. And, and we would love to work with the school district on you know, whatever kind of things um, would suit the needs of the students. Yeah. And we're having conversations with um, uh, the Boys and Girls Club as well, and um, actually one of our board members is sponsoring six Boys and Girls Club uh, members to be part of our summer program. Well, one uh, of our new school board uh, trustees is also a trustee on, this, on the Boys and Girls Club, and right. he's listening to you right now. <laughs> he is, I see him. So, uh, but I want to thank you again for reaching out and, um, and thank the board for um, allowing for uh, seed to come in and make a presentation so that we can have an awareness of, of uh, doing our part 
because I, I do think that we uh, that, that we are all a little more aware now that we live in the South Country School District and so close to the uh, the waters that we all grew up with and want to protect them. Yeah. So um, it's an important thing that you know we're uh, that we only have one Earth, so yeah, we yeah. gotta foster that with the kids, right? So we will, we will do our part, and also I just want to mention that Seed is now a part of our leadership group. So all the all the uh, events that you have, you can share with the leadership group, and then the superintendent will get it out to all of us, yes. and we can make sure that you have um, additional exposure. Yes, thank you. We've already been doing that. I've been working with Sarah on that, and um, and we've been doing that already. And um, oh, there's something that just popped in my mind about that that I wanted to mention. Um, oh, that I also wanted to mention that we're excited to have the bookmobile um, at our oh, yeah. uh, at our next coming festivals. Yes. So that'll be a new thing, which you know, through the leadership network, there will be that connection. So, uh, so that's great. So it's already starting to happen. Okay. So, and, and Mrs. Small will be shot. Yes. yes, you have my information. So thank you. I really so appreciate thank you inviting you. us to come in. Thank yeah. You thank you so much. much. Thank yeah. you very much. You had some information you wanted to leave with the clerk or Mr. I Small? did. Did yes. you do that? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Moving on to item two. Item two, BOE meeting calendar. Yes. Okay. So the next item for discussion and action is the Board of Education meeting schedule for the 2019-20 school year. We have a total of 20 proposed meetings, including the budget hearing. Two of these meetings are workshop meetings, one of them for student achievement results, and the other one specifically on the budget. Very similar, actually identical to other than the dates of what we did this year. I offer this for the board's uh, discussion and action. And for the benefit of the new uh, trustees in the room, there was some discussion to try to push this off and have you guys decide, since the majority of you will be affected by this. We really can't do that because we have to set the reorganizational meeting so that you can so that you can operate. Um, I know there was some question over when the board would be sworn in and perhaps not wait until the July. But I'm going to push that off to the superintendent to have conversations with you directly um, uh, to see if there's any concern. Because the reorg is so late this year, mm -hmm. it's usually in that first week, but because of the 4th of July Fourth holiday, of July, yes. it pushes it back to July 10th. So if there's any action that needs to take place, yes. Mr. Just a question on that, because that was a concern I had was how late the reorganization meeting is, and I do appreciate that it's after the holiday, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a Wednesday. Would we want to consider <laughs> that week before on either the Monday or the third, maybe the Thursday? Do we really think that being on a Wednesday Thursday is going to be? Thursday is the Thursday fourth. Thursday the fourth, I'm sorry, so maybe, I, that's right, the Monday third. Or so Monday, Monday or the two, I just, I wondered, I, I just, I, concerning that it's 10 days into the month, and, you know, I, I don't know if we want to, well, I, I guess we have to vote on it tonight, I don't know. Do we really think we won't get participation? Well, we, we could vote on it next. Could you if, if, if nobody agrees with me to try to move it, then no, I'm I, fine I with it. No, I think you have a valid point, and, and it was raised by um, uh, Mrs. Hayes' call uh, today uh, about it, and I brought it to the attention of the superintendent. But um, even the, uh, the board updates that you send out to the board, which are confidential, if they're not sworn in yet, they're getting confidential information that they are not sworn to its uh, secrecy. Yes. Would board. that fall under the confidentiality agreements? Oh, yes, perhaps. If those were signed prior? Okay. okay. I, I mean, it was just a thought. So that's, a great, that's a great point. So I can have that discussion with so the trustees, can. and then yes. once that is in place, we can begin to invite them into exec and share okay. with them any confidential memos that I sent to the board. Okay. One more quick question for council. Is, am, I, am I wrong that a, a newly elected trustee is officially a trustee on July 1st, or is it do they have to be sworn in first? They have to be sworn in first. Okay. I thought it was the first, and then it was, okay. And they can be sworn in at any time. They can even be sworn in before the first, but it doesn't take place until there is they, it. They have to be sworn in within 30 days of the start of their appointment. Okay, so it can't so be it's, it's in outside range. Okay, gotcha. And they must be sworn in before they take any action. Okay, gotcha. So to that point. But even action, but I guess my point was yeah. after July 1st, even though they're, they're not permitted to take action, are they, are they able to receive confidential information by a board update or things like that. You're not voting, you just, it was always my understanding that once July 1st hit, you're a board member and any information, confidential or not, is available to you. 
you just can't take action, as you said. Uh, you are not you are not a board member until you take the oath and okay. file it to the district. Okay. Okay. So then that, that was my question. So then, do we want to just have them like we did with um, Mr. Trent was, uh, today, before him, before the exec session, the, the ceremonial? Do we want to have the new board members come in on a, on January, January, July, July 1st? I think that's a question for be, them. Just to be sworn in, we, and then. I, well, July 1st, yeah, we can I mean, I, you know, do I don't know. I, although, at the same token, I don't know that we should delay the voting on this either. I mean, can we vote on it and change the meeting after? Sure. Right. Yeah. So, for, yeah, because we, we have another month and a half. Uh, but I'm saying I think we should vote on the calendar yeah. and discuss changing the reorg at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, I, uh, my secretary informs me that one of the new trustees is not available on the second. On the second. Yeah, and I'm not picking a date. I think we got to confer with everybody okay. first. I'm not. I just, if everybody's available on a day that's it doesn't disrupt the holiday and, and it's sooner than the tenth, I think we should make that effort to try that. But again, like I said, I think we should vote on this tonight and discuss afterwards changing the day of the reorganization. Meeting. Everybody ready to prepare to vote on the calendar? All right. All right. Then we need a motion and a second to approve the calendar. Now, if you only have the board meeting calendar, but in the attachments you have the school calendar as well. The red. And they the red highlights. So there's two. Yeah. So there's two. Are we voting on list? two? Or? Uh, well, actually, you are because, as I had indicated to the board. Um, a couple of updates ago, mm -hmm. we, we made a change to, to uh, one of the parent-teacher conferences, and we went to March 20th, and it's highlighted on the, on the consolidated calendar okay. in the bottom left corner. Okay. Not, not, a, not a big deal, but I wanted the board to be aware of uh, the change. So the motion is to adopt both. Adopt the, uh, yes. The, Board of Education the, approves the board meeting scheduled for the 2019-2020 school year. So that incorporates both calendars? Yes. Okay. All right. May we have a motion and second, Ms. Mealy? Seconded by Mr. Nix. Any further discussion? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, raise your hands. Thank you very much. Put it down. Seeing all hands raised, the calendars are adopted unanimously. Thank you. You're welcome. The next item for discussion is the first reading of the strategic plan for school years 2017 to 2022. The board's advisory committee for strategic planning has spent a large part of last school year as well as this school year reviewing and updating the plan, which is set to expire this June. Using the more current and more current baseline data, new card targets were developed for school year 2019-20 and 2021-22. It is important to note one of the challenges the committee had was the data reliability due to our refusal numbers or, or not participating in performance criteria based uh, the ex or extremely low numbers on the state assessments. While the district's 2017-18 refusal rate has decreased by 55 percent, uh, more than half of our students still are not sitting for the New York State assessments. As a result, the committee determined that while refusals have decreased, the reduction was not significant or large enough to be considered reliable. I offer this new plan or updated plan for the board's uh, consideration and as a first reading, no action is needed. All right, so there's uh, 29 pages to read through. <laughs> okay, and then at the next meeting, we will have to adopt it. Yeah. And, and I, the, so they can, I don't mean to interrupt, okay. but so you, and you sit on the committee, so you know. That's what we painstakingly, speak, and yes. Ms. Uh, Ms. Um, Hayes hey, also hey. sits on the committee. Um, we painstakingly went through and went through all the and many changes throughout. Uh, so it is a lot to read, there's a lot of information. Okay. All right, so please make sure you do take the time to read it, as next meeting it will need an action. Any other questions on the strategic plan document? Um, that's me or that's you? That's you. Yeah, me. Yeah. Okay, moving along to curriculum items. The administration recommends approval of curriculum items reflected in schedules G1 and G2. Okay. Need a motion and a second for uh, the consent agenda. Mr. Nick, seconded by Ms. Mallon. Any discussion on G1 and 2? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please raise your hands. Thank you, put them down. Any, any opposed? 
no foes, no abstentions. Uh, seeing all hands raised, G1 and 2 are approved unanimously. And moving on to personnel, administration recommends approval of personnel changes reflected in schedules H1 through H11. Again, made a motion and a second for H1 through H11. Motion by, who did I start with, Mr. Malin, Mrs. Malin, or Mr. Nix? Mr. Nix? Second by Ms. Malin. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hands. Thank you very much. Seeing all hands raised. Motion and before we move on to business, uh, I, it's customary and I'd like mm -hmm. to announce some of the probationary appointments that are here this evening that the board has just approved. You approved some nine probationary appointments to uh, uh, ladies that are here with us. I'd like to announce Caitlin Bahat, who is going to be speech teacher at BMS. Caitlin, you want to stand up? Or you stand up. And our second one is Colleen Oates. I hope I don't mess this up, Colleen. I'm sorry. Well, thank you. Colleen will be the new library specialist at the high school. Congratulations. Thank you. And did I miss anyone? No, I didn't miss anyone. Okay. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone. And moving along to business, administration recommends approval of business items reflected in. Ooh, we have to do item one as a roll call, Mr. Clark. Do we have to do item one? I've read that. It's on the agenda as a roll call. Yes, roll call. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. tax anticipation, no resolution. <laughs> so, why don't, while, while the clerk is getting ready, administration recommends approval uh, of business items reflected in schedules H2, I'm um, sorry, I2 through I27. So, we'll do that first? We'll go yes, to the... and then we'll go back. To okay. The all right. I-2 through I-27? Yes. 27. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Malin, second by Mr. Nix. Any discussion? All those in favor of I-2 through I-27, please raise your hands. Thank you very much. Seeing all hands raised. The motion passes unanimously, and now we are back to I-1. And administration recommends approval of I-1, tax anticipation of resolution for 2019, 2010, that's 20. Just 20. Yeah. Type of. Just, well, read the resolution that's there. Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. Just, <laughs> I'm sorry. The first. <laughs> The first paragraph. Okay. The first paragraph. Tax anticipation. Because then it clears it up. Can you uh, clip, clip that out? <laughs> Tax anticipation note resolution of the South Country Central School District at Brookhaven, New York, adopted May 22, 2019, authorizing the issuance of not to exceed 21 million anti tax anticipation notes in anticipation of receipts of taxes to be levied for the fiscal school year ending June 30th, 2020. Yeah, that's why I wanted to read it. Okay. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Bill. No, no. So, so that's because we we have to pay bills before we get tax. So this is borrowing money, tax anticipation. Correct. In the anticipation of taxes. In the anticipation of taxes. <laughs> okay. All right, and uh, so we do need a roll call vote for it, but let's first take a motion and a second, please. Motion and a second by Dr. Griffin, seconded by, did I, did I see a hand raise? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, by Mr. Trent. All right, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Roll call, please. Okay. Lisa DeSanto, absent for vote. Carol Mallon. Yes. Chris Pacini. Yes. Dr. Griffin? Yes. Cameron Trent? Yes. Jeff Nix? Yes. Cheryl Felice? Yes. Do you want me to read back? Well, the, 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 you, have, you have a majority. Okay. So the motion uh, for the tax anticipation note uh, passes unanimously. Thank you very much. <coughs> Is gavel it to make it official. Okay, we're back to public commentary for, for uh, any item that would like to be discussed. Are there any cards? Is there anyone wishing to speak? Miss Hayes. 
We just needed a quick fill out a card, but you can speak first and then fill out the card before it's over. Okay. Would you, would you like the podium or is no, the end fine? You. This is fine. Okay. Um, I just wanted to thank all the voters and community members who came out to vote yesterday and who've given me and my colleagues um, this great opportunity to work with Dr. Chiane and the remaining members of the board who are not going off July 1 to carry on some of these great things that we're seeing going on in our school district. And it really captured it for me tonight to come into the middle of watching that steam uh, presentation to see even from the little the littlest ones and then knowing about what's going on with the big ones that we're touching the lives of many children in very vibrant ways and I'm really grateful that I'm going to have an opportunity to be part of that. Um, I think it's an awesome responsibility that's been placed on us and um, there's a challenge before us because not only will we build on all the good things, we're going to have to look to see if there are things that need some help because there are challenges there and move that forward in the right direction. So I'm really looking forward to forming a good working relationship with the other members of the board who are coming on and the ones who are remaining as well as with our superintendent. And when we come back here next year, I want to just hear that things are even bigger and better than they were tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just make sure you fill out a card with, uh, with the clerk, please. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, closing remarks by board members. How about we start with Mr. Trent? Okay. No comment. No comment. We'll go back over to Carly. Carly, any closing comments? Okay. Ms. Malin? No, thank you. Mr. Pacini? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, Mr. Nix? Just some thank yous. Thank you to uh, the many faculty and staff members who participated in and contributed to the Julian Nofi basketball fundraiser. Their work resulted in a donation of $3,070 for the scholarship fund. That's a beautiful thing. Thank you to Capital One Bank for their donation of $250 to the high school scholarship fund. And thank you to all of those who contributed to Donors Choose in support of learning activities in Miss Cleveland's class at Frank P. Long. That's all I have. Okay. Just a reminder to the board, we do have to go back into executive session. Right. We'll stay here. We can stay here. I'm going to have to skip the executive session. I okay. Myself, just okay. So, you know. So uh, we will come back, but for the for the community, then we'll, we will be not vote. We will not be voting on anything else after uh, executive session. Um, I just would like to say in closing, I appreciate what Ms. Hayes had to say about the, the pride and the the honor to serve on the school board. So Ms. Malin and I were feeling a little melancholy today. Know that the, you know we have one more and we're done. But it really was the most rewarding experience to be on this uh, to be on a school board. And, um, and Dr. Griffin, I know, shares that feeling with all of us. So we'll have more to say about our leaving next week because we didn't bring tissues with us tonight. So we'll talk about it next week. But we are very proud of the, um, of the board members that are, that are coming on board. And I always like to say whatever organization I am to who's ever uh, coming up and stepping up as new, uh, we want you to make it better than what we left it because that's how we improve and we make we make us uh, as a district stronger. So good luck to you in your endeavor and I know I, I probably speak for everybody that if we can ever be of any assistance you would be only too happy to give it. All right, but much good luck. So with that we'll take a motion to, to <coughs> go back into executive session and then all of you are free to go home. So, motion to go back into exec with Mr. Trent, seconded by Ms. Malin. All those in favor? Thank you. We are now back into discussion, but I need a five minute break. Okay.